So I'm Martin Marquez, work at Second Quadrant, uh, like, I don't know, five years or so. Uh, I've been at DBA since like year 2000, started working with Informix, but uh, one year later, well, actually one year before I started looking at Postgres. <laughs> and then uh, worked at adopting it in the university where I was working. Uh, and then I joined Second Quadrant. Uh, mainly as support engineer, uh, remote DBA engineer, and consultant. So the talk here is about, uh, well, uh, nice title always, uh, untangling uh, the Postgres upgrade. So uh, what I wanted to uh, talk about was about uh, different ways to upgrade your servers. Uh, we've heard about big companies that uh, well, we know of one big company that left Postgres because they had problems upgrading. Actually, they had communication problems, but that's a part. Um, so what I want to explain here is different ways to upgrade. First, it was going to be just uh, upgrading uh, major upgrades, but then I decided to point, put inside point releases because it's like a big topic, point releases. Like, Nobody wants to really upgrade. So I added some slides as point release. So two types of upgrades. We got point release upgrades, we got major upgrades. Point releases are bug fixes in the middle of a major release. Major release is a new release with new features. No new features are added in a point release upgrade, only bug fixes. That doesn't mean that you don't have to test your point release upgrades. You know, we had a, somebody that was talking to me yesterday that they had some a query plan that changed after an upgrade. Well, they found out that the query was bad, badly written, so they fixed the query and it started working well again. <clears throat> so point releases are, as you see here, no? 9.4x, 9.1x, 9.6x. So this was all before version 10. Whoever came to Alvaro's call, uh, talk, he mentioned about the change in versioning. Yeah. Now we just have 10.1.2.3.4, and we're going to have .5 uh, next week on Thursday. Major versions are 8.2. So the first version of A2 is A2.0, but we just call it A2. Then comes A2.1, then we have 9.3, 9.6. And after 9.6, as you can see, it's just 10, 11, and then we're going to have 12, 13, 14, hopefully. This is just notes about versioning. So point release upgrade is just upgrading inside a point release, uh, inside a, a major release. So we got 966, and we want to upgrade to the latest version, which is 969. Hmm. A major release is actually jumping. Uh, OK, no, sorry. This is also another version. This is major release. So when you want to upgrade from, for example, 9220 to 969, the problem is that the 2 changes to, an I, to a 6. So you're moving to a different version with different formats, <coughs> sorry, uh, data file formats. So you can't just stop the server, upgrade binaries, and start again. The, the, the data format of the files underneath are incompatible, so you can't work that way. So point releases. Why would you want to do a point release upgrade? I mean, what, what's the reason for rushing point release? Well, there's lots of bug fixes in the middle. That, the last point release uh, that I showed for 969 has a very serious uh, bug fix for toast corruption. Uh, we actually have a customer that's running an old version of 96, and they're hitting that problem, and they don't want to upgrade to 969, which would fix the problem. So it's our, t our task to convince them that it's good for them to upgrade. I hope I can convince you guys as well. How to upgrade point releases? So uh, the question is, well, do I need downtime? Do I need a window? Well, you, you might need a window of a few minutes. Uh, there's a couple of tips that you can do in the middle, like 
uh, so you have to restart your master. If you only have a master, or you have a master in a standby, and you don't want to do switchovers and that kind of things, and you can afford a downtime of a few minutes, there's one trick that you can do, that is run a checkpoint before you start the whole cycle. Why? Because when you shut down your system, and you have to shut it down, install the new binaries, and then bring up the new, bring up the server with the new binaries, a checkpoint happens. Because normally the systems do a, a, a fast shutdown, and not an immediate one. So if you run a checkpoint before, all the dirty pages get written to, to, file, uh, to that file, I mean, and the shutdown is almost instantly. And you have a faster upgrade. You just shut down, install binaries, start. You can do that in 10 seconds or less. So that's 10 second downtime. <clears throat> so if you have a big cluster, uh, several standbys, and you want to have almost zero downtime while upgrading, well, the option is to upgrade all your standbys first. You go, you go out upgrading one standby, the next one, one by one. Then you do a switch over. You pick one standby, and you switch it over with the primary. Hmm? So now you have a new primary, hmm? which is running an updated version, and you have a standby running an old version. And you upgrade the remaining node, which was switched over. Alternatively, you can switch back, performing the same task, another switch over. So this would be something like this. Uh, let's say you have a PG bouncer, and you've got a primary with 969. Uh, OK. This is for next week. Okay? So we have a primary with 969, and we got standby, uh, a standby in a, another data center, a DR node, and some reporting standby that we, we use to write uh, query reports, for example. First, we update all the standbys. As you can see, this doesn't exist yet, but it will next week. So you can prepare for next week. Then we pause the connection to the primary. Then we switch over the primary and the standby. Whoever came to see uh, Hymas talk would know that this can be done automatically with Rev Manager. Then we follow, we make the two standbys follow the new primary. And we reconfigure a PG Bouncer so it points to the correct primary and resume and upgrade the standby that's left. And it's over. You got your cluster completely with the new version that still doesn't exist. But well, next week. You could do a failback later, like pausing again, PG Bouncer, doing the switch over, and get back to the original architecture that you had. <coughs> Homework for everyone. Write a, an Ansible playbook so that you don't have to like script it all or run all the comments manually. Hmm? Uh, you can use also uh, Chef cookbooks or whatever. Hmm? But even a script is better than doing it manually. But well, then you have Chuck Norris. So if you're Chuck Norris, you just log into the primary. You don't test. You just execute everything. That went fast for like 20 slides. So major upgrades. There's a few reasons why uh, we should always try to keep upgrading to the newer versions, major versions available. Maybe the most important is the new features. But I think the third is also very important. But let's start with new features. So. Uh, I can give an example of a customer, I'm not going to say which one, but they're running 9.3, and they're using partitioning. So they're using uh, PG Partman or something like that, and using inherently, inherent uh, partitioning, which is a real pain. And Raphael knows about that. Uh, if the table is very busy, like one of the tables that they have partitioned, 
uh, you end up with uh, deadlocks whenever you want to create new child tables and it's really a mess. <coughs> so they would really benefit moving to 10 or 11. Even moving to 10, they would really benefit a lot. So that's a good reason to upgrade. Right? Some very good feature available in newer versions of Postgres. Also, some code, uh, some code that was also that was already available in older versions have changed. So you, you got some code path changes. So some customers might even uh, benefit by just changes inside the code that would make the system work much better. That's another customer. <laughs> also has to upgrade from 9.3. But this is, I think, maybe the most important. Always stay on a community-supported version. You know, 9.3 is, is uh, entering end of life uh, before the end of the year. So anyone that's running 9.3 should be thinking about, um, they should already be planning the upgrade. How? So I, I, I'm on 9.3. How do I get to a newer version? Well, there's maybe the three most important uh, ways of getting upgrading major releases. One is just doing a logical upgrade with downtime. So if you can afford a downtime, a large enough downtime, you can do a logical upgrade with downtime. That's just doing PG dump and PG restore. That's like the oldest. Uh, the original way of upgrading that we had, like when you were in the 7.0 era. Yeah. Then we started having in-place upgrades huh? with PG upgrade. That was in 8.24, oh, 8.4, oh, okay, 8.4, I thought it was before, 8.3. 8.3 uh, was the last page double. <coughs> 8.4, uh, okay. Okay, so starting in 8.4, you could do a, an in-place upgrade. Why in-place? Well, because you got that directory there, you install binaries for the two versions, the old and the new one, and you upgrade from the old version to the new one. Um, in, in, in the case that I'm gonna show as an example, I'm gonna use the link mode, which is actually the way that people do in-place upgrade, because else you have to copy all the terabytes of data and it's, Where's the small downtime? The third option is doing a logical upgrade with near zero downtime. So stay tuned for that. That's going to come later. So a PG dump. I still do PG dump upgrades. When the data size is very small, I tend to try to get enough downtime to perform a, down, uh, a PG dump, PG restore upgrade. Why? Well, first because, well, the first reason I use is it's, it's well tested. I mean, PG dump is like since forever. Hmm? It's been there. I once tried to find when the first commit for PG dump was and I couldn't find it. So I, I went back to six something and it was there. It's yeah, it's part of the original source. It's, and <clears throat> even if the code is kind of a mess uh, or hard to understand, yeah, we know, with Stefan, uh, it, it, when you finish understanding it, you know, you say, wow, this is super great. It's tested a lot more now. Yeah, no, I mean, also, it's, when I said well tested, I mean, I guess nobody can say I never used PG dump. Who can say I didn't use PG dump ever? No way, eh, no hands up. Everybody has tested at least once PG dump. There's people that do PG dumps all the time. Uh, even if you have a terabyte size table, uh, database, you might wanna like copy down one table and move it somewhere else. So you do PG dump. PG dump dash T, the name of the table. Or copy schemas that later you can fill with test data. Oops. Another reason is that this is very, it could be important if your cluster is really bloated and you, there's no way of cleaning the bloat. The new cluster is gonna be free of bloat. Well, there's gonna be some bloat because, well, you got fill factor and some other options that keep 
free space in the middle. But if you have a table that has like, I don't know, like 10% real space and 90% uh, free space in the middle, well, you'll end up with a clean table. And indexes will be clean as well, so it's very important. It could be important. And you can ru run PG dump and PG restore in parallel. So if you have some big servers, you know, with lots of CPU, you might get good speed, even on hundreds of gigabytes of data. And also, it's very easy to deploy on new hardware. So you have old hardware, and you want to upgrade your hardware as well. Well, you just install the new hardware, have everything ready. You can test it running PG dump, PG restore, check times. That's like the big con of PG dump, PG restore. You know. It scales horribly. So, like, you're not going to do a 10 terabyte upgrade with PG Dump and PG Restore. Not even if you have like 128 cores and, you know, it's not going to work. <clears throat> but if you don't have like 10 terabytes of data, you got like a couple of hundred, even less, and you can afford the downtime, like maybe an hour or two, well, there's a few tips that you can take. Uh, one is use directory format. With directory format, you can use parallel PG dump and parallel PG restore. Uh, parallel PG dump if you're on 9.2 or better, because you don't have snapshots before that. Well, you could, you could trust that nothing is writing on the source data database. But if you don't trust, I mean, well, you could. I mean, you could change uh, PG HBA conf and nobody connects over. And these are some very interesting uh, options. I have another one that I didn't put here, but I'll explain. Uh, <clears throat> turn off archive command. So, uh, Postgres doesn't try to archive. You can just do it by changing archive comment to bin true, and then nothing happens. Turn out a vacuum off. Uh, this is on on the destination node, not on the source node. So this is where you're going to be the, the new node with the new version of Postgres. Turn out a vacuum off, because if you run PG dump, you start dumping data, and then auto vacuum starts jumping in and trying to analyze. and so, yeah. Synchronous commit off, that's also a very important one. There's a fourth one that you can use that is set F sync off. So, F sync off is very dangerous. But it's very dangerous if you have uh, concurrency and there's the possibility of a crash. But we're just creating a new cluster. If for any reason it crashes, I mean, just cancel the upgrade, move back to the old version, and plan for next week. Hmm? So you can do a PG dump with F sync off, a PG restore with F sync off. And when you finish, you run initdb dash dash sync only. And initdb will sync the PG data. And then you change F sync on, please. Put it on again. That should make it also a bit faster to restore all the data. And this is one that I found just by, well, actually by talking with another engineer that works with me. Uh, on the source node, you might benefit by uh, increasing read ahead on the operating system. And on the destination, I found that changing the scheduler also gives a lot better performance, like three times better. Like, uh, going from two hours to 40 minutes of restore time on a like 400 gigabyte database. Which, hmm? Which one did you use? Well, the default is CFP, and uh, I used Noop, and it went like I don't know. I, I I'm not a Linux expert, or and it's least a scheduler. <laughs> I don't know why it worked better, but. I tested with one, with the other, and it, that, those were the times. That's the best for SSD, 
yeah, I, yeah. The, I really don't know what the underlying uh, disks are because they are somewhere in Dallas. In Linode. But basically what you have to do is test with different options. Still you need, I mean for 400, 400 gigabytes or something like that, I need like a total of two hours of downtime. The customer can afford that and they're moving to a new, uh, a whole new system so they're going to be upgrading also their application. So there's going to be a lot of things going on at the same time. <clears throat> so the pros, well, oh sorry, I moved to PG upgrade now, forgot that. So uh, PG upgrade, you can see that I put in link mode. Huh? So we're not, we're not going to talk about PG upgrade without link mode because uh, you need to copy all the data over, you need double space. Mm -hmm. But if you use link mode, well first it's much faster than, like, I can't even say a fraction of the time because it's nothing compared. PG upgrade will only do uh, dump and restore of global objects and schemas and then it copies the data over. But if you do link mode, it doesn't copy it, it just creates hard links. And then it does some fiddling with the, with the hint bits uh, so that they can work on the new version. And maybe something else that I don't know, but that's like... No, no, that comes later. Don't, don't spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> so the cons of using PG upgrade. Well, it can take a long time if you have, like people say, okay, it's very fast. It's gonna finish in two minutes, three minutes because they tested it with one database that they had. The problem is when you have big schemas. Why? Because it has to dump and restore the schema. So if you have a big schema, you have a big catalog. You have to query your whole catalog you have to write it on the other node, uh, on the destination. So it takes longer with big schemas. There have been problems when skipping versions, especially when there's involved like extensions that change versions and in the middle of the versions they change. Uh, well, yeah, but I didn't want to put like five different Well, the extensions are a problem. But extensions are a problem, but, uh, the well, well, Tom said once that skipping versions was like, not like, yeah, I got, yeah, yeah, there, there's, there's a mail out there. Well, it, it was actually um, somebody in general that, you're with Steve, yeah, I know, you guys and Sean are all together with PG Upgrade. No, the, the problem was that there was an extension that changed an operator or dropped an operator and when they upgraded and, and skipped, yeah, but they skipped the version where that, that was applied and that's what happened. So it's like they jumped from 9.1 to 9.6 or something like that and in the middle, the extension dropped one of the operators that it had. So when they tried to restore. The problem, the problem there is that you upgraded the, the extension at the same time. Yeah, no, no, the, that he didn't upgrade the extension before doing the PG upgrade. So the trick, the trick was move, move, the, move the, the extension upgrade file to the old version, run an alter extension upgrade, and then upgrade. So you trick. Sure, but that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah, that's well. Different. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, because there are two against one, I'll give you like the benefit there on that one only. And the third one is that you can't, can't back, go back. Well, you can't go back because you're on link mode. So once you start your server with the new version, you can't go back to the old version. If you're not using link mode, yeah, because you have the two clusters, you have the two data directories. And that's the gacha uh, that Stephen talked about. If you are upgrading from before 9.5 to something bef after or equal to 9.6, uh, it takes longer because it has to recreate all the visibility maps. Because the visibility maps change the format, so it's, yeah, it has to recreate. Uh, so it takes longer. 
Thanks, Alvaro. Uh, he gave me that some time ago. Yeah. The visibility map. Uh, you can, you can, if you go through and clear all the visibility maps first, you can ah. go back and rebuild them. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, nobody tells me how much time I have. How much time? Half an hour. Half an hour? Oh, that's great. Oh, you see, there wasn't so many slides. Uh, OK, this is like the big one that I wanted to talk. That, that was like the original reason for this talk, like talking about zero downtime upgrades. So before 9.4, there was uh, something called zero downtime upgrade, which was a real mess. You need to use uh, trigger-based replication, which has uh, impacts on performance. Uh, this one is like, well, all tables have to have a primary key if you use the replication tools that are available by default. Like if you install Bucard or Longdist, and I think Sloney does the same, they check that all the tables that you replicate have a primary key before you can add them to the provide. I guess you could like rewrite and like trick it so that it doesn't use, but you have to guarantee that the table that doesn't have a primary key doesn't write any updates or deletes because there's no way of replicating that over. <laughs> After 9.4, we have logical decoding, replication slots, and a lot of new stuff. So by using logical decoding, we can use the walls that we've written, which has, well, I, I said no overhead, but there is an overhead, but it's like, this is like this compared to this. Like, it's a lot smaller. And you don't always need primary keys. So if you have some insert only tables, you can go and you, you can go by not using primary, not having primary keys on the tables because, uh, well, there's a, a special mode in PG Logical to, up, to uh, copy only inserts from the source to the destination. So if, if you know that the table only receives insert, you could go by without, without a primary key there. Oh, and also you can use uh, replica identity. So that does have a bit of an overhead. So the trigger base, which I'm not going to talk about more than this, the solutions were uh, Longdist, Sloney, and Bucardo. I list them in the order that I would recommend them. Uh, I almost striked out Bucardo, but I left it there. Just... <clears throat> and uh, if you're 9.4 or better, you can use PG Logical directly. So PG Logical can perform the upgrade. Uh, I mean, the full upgrade, but it can perform the copy from the provider to the subscriber. And in PG10, you already have, you know, you know, you have logical replication in core, but you can still add PG logical, which uses all the features of Postgres 10's logical replication and adds new stuff that hopefully will at one time be all inside core with the exception of a small subset. So, PG Logical. You know, I'm sorry to think that I went too fast because I had too many slides and the, the talk is almost over. <laughs> so the pros and the cons of having, uh, using PG Logical. Well, the pros uh, uses logical decoding directly. Uh, so it decodes the, the changes from the walls uh, and then applies them on the provider or providers. It could be several. Uh, you can upgrade your whole infrastructure, which I'm going to show just in a minute or two. And you can actually test the cluster while you're replicating. Like you could try to run queries or even try to run some, well, if you write, if you run some DML, uh, yeah, you're going to like, you could like cut the replication, test it, and then scratch it open, scratch it all, and start over. 
but you can also test your queries while you're replicating, and you could even run queries that use temp tables and stuff like that, because it's a master. So you have a master, a master, and you're just replicating logically. The cons, I was a bit like, I didn't know if I should put this here. But there, there is some overhead in, in all the initial setup. You, know, you need to install PG Logical, which is very easy, but you need to configure, reconfigure Postgres. Yeah, but you need to add PG Logical to a share preload library, so you gotta restart there. So you already have a small downtime to restart you might also need to uh, set up uh, max replication slots uh, and some other uh, variables. But I guess that the most important is that you need to put PG Logical inside pre-shared uh, shared preload libraries. And that requires a reload. A restart, sorry. Yes. Reload would be great. Uh, <clears throat> but once you have that, you just log in, create extension, uh, there's functions to load all the tables in the provider and then load them all in the subscriber. Um, you can copy, you can even tell it to copy all the schema, so it, it copies the schema and then all the data. It's really great. This isn't uh, a con of PG Logical, it's actually a con of the whole system of doing a logical upgrade with zero, near zero downtime. It's not zero downtime, it's near zero. The zero doesn't exist. But there's always even a millisecond. You're going to have to continuously monitor the lag because you have to like find the moment where the lag is like small, the smallest possible. So you, you'll be monitoring the lag and saying, okay, like, guys, we're going to have to be up at 2 a.m. because that's when the lag is like this. And that's when we can do the switch over. But once you, you got that time, it's all very simple, and I'm going to show you. So this is another infrastructure, very, sim very similar to the old one. I actually, it, I used the same drawing and just like changed a few things. So we got the PG Bouncer pointing to the primary. Okay? Has a standby. Could have two, three, four, five standbys, whatever. And we just create a clone of the whole infrastructure. So we got another primary with 10.4. And it's standby, clean. <clears throat> and we set PG logical replication from 9.6 to Postgres 10. So we initialize it. It will copy all the schema and start copying table after table. Uh, in the old days, if we use long list, it would do exactly the same. But uh, the copying of the data is done by creating triggers, uh, the triggers store the data locally, then with the PGQ, it's copied, it's uh, <coughs> gathered by long disk and copied over to the subscriber, which is a bit slower. Well, depends, but the, it's a bit large. If your system is really, uh, has a large workload, it can be like a big performance hit to add triggers. We actually had uh, customers with 9.1 and 9.2 that uh, refused to use trigger-based replication to upgrade. They, they couldn't. They couldn't afford putting triggers and putting more load on their systems. So this is the initial setup. You, know, you, got, you got your old system. You got your new system. You put PG Logical in motion. You monitor your lag. You find a moment where the lag is near zero, very small. So in that time, you do you just pause PG Bouncer. So once you pause PG Bouncer, nothing else goes to the primary. You check that there's no lag between the primary and the the the, pro, the provider and the subscriber. So all the data has been copied over, and you change the configuration of PG Bouncer, and you resume and you cut the replication because it's not necessary anymore. And now you can just dump the old 9.6 cluster and you got your primary working just like that. So the initial setup is like a real pain. It requires some, also some testing, which you could do. <coughs> a 
this time, you could run some tests here, because this is primary. So if you have like materialized views or you have, um, sorry, whoops. So if you have primary uh, materialized views or you use temp tables or whatever, you can run them here. It's a primary node. Hmm? You could also run inserts. Uh, the problem running inserts is that the inserts from the 9.6 node will generate conflicts. Well, you could generate like large transactions, see how they work with a rollback at the end, like see if this works well here and the whole transaction, just roll it back at the end and see if it rolled back before, if it errors before it gets to the last rollback. Many ways of testing that. <coughs> so, some conclusions. Well, I think I already said it, always, plan your point release upgrades as soon as they are available. So you already know that there's a point release coming up this week on Thursday. You can already start planning for uh, upgrade sometime in the weekend, for example, or next week. Hmm? Better next week. Eh? So when it comes out, you start testing it, and next weekend, that would be like 5, 12, 19, yeah, you can, Sunday 19, you can all be upgrading your servers to the late, latest point release. That is if you are on a community supported uh, system. If you're on old 9.2, 9.1, 8x, well, if you're on 8x, like, guys, get. <laughs> I was here. So this was the, the second one. Stay on community support uh, version. So anyone that's running 9.3 here? You know what to do. You need to upgrade. We have a bunch of customers on 9.3, so it's, 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 not, it's not that bad. 7.2? I, I don't believe you. Last time we had one in 8.2 trying to upgrade, you complained a lot. I don't think you have with 7.2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, watch your language. Yeah, sorry. So they copy the VMs, uh, they, they grab a copy of the age or something like that. It's just all data. So they copy the, 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 they have a physical copy. That's good. At least they have a backup. Right. <laughs> uh, test your application against upgraded versions always before upgrading. That's why I said, OK, let's wait one more week. So you point release. I mean, on point releases, test your application. On major releases, really test your applications. Like, really test them. Uh, there's. There's always changes, so sometimes it works a lot better. Uh, sometimes there's some gotchas in the middle that you have to fix. Uh, they're normally fixable in the application, like, I don't know. I don't have an example in my head right now. No, no nothing in between versions. Well, there was one in 8.3. Uh, yeah, the, the, the one with the, um, the uh, oh. No, no, no. Oh, I, I. No, no. In A3, we change. The, there was a change about. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Typecasting. That was. I, I had to fix a lot of typecasting in one of the applications that I had. I was doing. Everything works. That was like. MySQL style, coding, really bad on my side. So if enough uh, downtime is affordable, pgdump is a very good option. So for little databases, so if you have something that is really small, very small, uh, even if it's very active, you could uh, end up with a very small downtime. I think Alvaro was working with some customer trying to get them to upgrade in like two, three minutes, something like that. So 
That never happened. It did happen. Okay, so you, that, there's a case. Oh, oh, okay. That's good. So they're not on 7.2. No, they are on 7.2. This is a different system. Oh, okay. So they have another one. Oh, so <laughs> okay. Uh, well, and the last conclusion is that it is possible to do an upgrade with near zero downtime, as, as I showed. Uh, as I showed here, uh, this this can be done in nothing. Psych. All the changes are in PG Bouncer. Once you have the lag in zero, you just pause, switch your configuration, resume, and it's done. The applications don't have, actually the application will just see that it slows down a bit. Like, like if there was a lock on a table that they're trying to access, something similar. Like PG Bouncer will just pause for a minute. One thing about PG Bouncer and using pause and resume. That works very well in two occasions. One, if you're using transaction modes and you don't have long running transactions. And if you're using session modes, you have to have sessions that open and close the connection very fast. Why? Because when I, uh, well, when you pause PG Bouncer, it, it first waits for all the connections to the database to finish. If you're on a transaction mode, once the transaction finishes, the connection finishes. And the connect, I mean, not the connection to the database, but actually the, the use, the, the, uh, the next, uh, the link between the client and the connection uh, gets released and the connection goes back to the pool. If you have a long running transaction, the pause is gonna like, hold there for a long time until that transaction ends. If you're using session mode and you have someone that open a session, like you open up a SQL connection against PG Bouncer, that's gonna open a connection to the primary and it's not gonna release the connection. So if you run a PG Bouncer pause, it's gonna hang there. It's not gonna let new connections come in, but it's not gonna finish. So that's something to take care, yeah, to be careful about. As I said, if you have really fast, uh, or, or the connections are really fast, you open and close the connections, or your transactions are very, very quick, you know, you start the, the transaction, apply everything and end it, you don't have idling transaction connections, or you don't have really long transactions or queries that run for a long time, then pausing can be really fast. Questions? No. No. They, 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 they feel it's like they were blocked. Like if you're trying to access a table that's locked. It's just like the client sees that it, nothing happens. And when you resume, it starts happening. It's like if you lock the table, have you ever locked the table and tried to query it? and your PSQL stays there doing nothing, then when you release the lock, it, not, it starts working. Well, the same thing will happen with PG Bouncer. So PG Bouncer will, will hold back all the client connections, then you reconfigure it, you change the configuration, you reload, and then you do a resume. When you resume, all the connections start working again, but they're pointing to the new server. Understand logical replication. Uh, the logical replication does does not update the the sequences. If you're working a very long table, the sequences will start at one. Yeah. You don't have so much in PG logical. The same problem happens. Well, PG logical uh, does update the sequences, but it uses the same. Uh, the same way, the same process that long disk and other systems use. So it's not gonna, it, it doesn't update the sequence one at a time as you're using them on the provider. It's gonna like, it's set to one, it's gonna set on the other side to, I think it's 5,000. It, it, it like takes a 
uh, yeah, it takes bumps ahead. So whenever you, you switch over, you might find there's a gap in the middle of sequence numbers. Uh, you could uh, run a script to up update all the sequences. I have a script to run. Yeah, well, that's, that's what we do if you, if you don't want the gap, but I, I mean. I did. Did you? I could have sworn it looked like you were doing the update on the primary first on, the, on that. I think this is the same time. Maybe I missed the <laughs> This is how it starts? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, it's because you flipped it. Then I flipped it. You flipped it, and then. Then I flip it. Uh, and, then, and then I flip, and then I change it, and then I upgrade the other. Right, yeah. You actually want to upgrade the other before you start actually streaming. Yeah, yeah. We, you, you want to upgrade the other. That's what I saw. That's why I was Ah, uh, okay. Upgrade. Well, yeah. I have if you a, start streaming ahead of time, you can end up with a wall record off the primary. <coughs> you can't be yes, that, that's another one. Always upgrade your standbys before the primary. Nothing else? Questions? Are there? Did you did you consider using um, setting wall level to minimal when you're doing, trying to make a? I I didn't. Or, you know, I didn't find. I yeah, didn't. Didn't it didn't help much. You know, I think that's something that we should fix in PG Restore to have an option in PG Restore in parallel mode to do to start a transaction, truncate the table, and then do the copy. Yeah. Because we all the actual create table commands happen somewhere else, but you could do. A truncate inside of one transaction, and then do the copy, and I bet that would skip. That should skip wall of wall if wall level is minimal, and that would be a lot faster. Yeah, but if you're doing it fresh, why would you do a truncate? The because if you don't truncate inside of the same transaction, then we can't skip wall unless you created the table inside that transaction. Oh, transaction. okay, okay, yeah, yeah, well, I get it. Create table in another <coughs> part of the code, so I think you have to. Yeah, I understand now. Yeah, yeah. But you could actually get it to either create the table or truncate the table inside the same transaction. Then on the PG restore, then we should be able to skip all of wall. I've done that by hand before. You make, you're you're making me read the, the PG logical, the PG dump. No, the PG restore, I have to read. That's, that one I didn't read it yet. But that would be something that would help a lot, I think. I've done that by hand, like in my own scripts. Yeah. I've done that, but I've never... It's, Something we should make PG Restore do. Because that does make it faster, because you skip wall. See, we already have a patch going on here. <laughs> can, you, can you repeat to, 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 to get it to the video? Because I don't think the audio is going to make it to the, to the YouTube. OK. Uh. <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> I was just saying that we should make it so that uh, inside of PG Restore, when doing a parallel PG Restore, we could have each parallel connection open up a transaction and inside of that transaction, either do a, a, either do the create table inside of that or do a truncate inside of that uh, before loading the data with copy. And if you do that with wall level set to minimal, you can s bypass anything going into wall. And when you're doing that for trying to do an upgrade, you could, it could be much faster that way. It only works if you don't have any replicas, though, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? That's the other thing. That's, that's a big gotcha, because if you have replicas, uh, well, you can't. You just can't. It's impossible. You can't, you can't connect over. You could rebuild the replicas after everything. Else. Yeah. <coughs> I think my talk was great because the only person making uh, questions is uh, <laughs> Stephen here, who's making like big questions. Like. I guess it's not really a question, but more of a, a, a thought or a suggestion because uh, I would take this for granted that every developer or GPA would actually read the release notes there before. <laughs> That's, that was a big one that I forgot to put in the slides. Read the release notes before upgrading. Yeah. That's, even with point releases, when you do a point release, you need to read the, the release notes. Really testing your application between major versions of the is like mandatory. No, but there's. 
No, but you have to test anyway. Like uh, the guys there, they, they had a problem with uh, an upgrade from 9.62 to 9.65. And there was a query that the plan changed. And they started having a bad plan. Uh, they didn't even uh, tell us about it because they found out that the query was terrible. It's like, <laughs> was it terrible or sort of? Well, it, was like, it wasn't well written, so they rewrote it and it started working well again. Uh, if they would have told us, we would have, like, Alvaro would have started looking, where did this change? Yeah. Because he's like, he started, what? What did we do? Let's see. And then he finds the, like, the code path that. Some things you only understand reading really, the results really after you actually tested. For example, I remember when the default changed from hex to escape or the opposite, I don't remember, uh, for the, the, the storage mode oh. or binary. Yeah, that was another one that I had to it fix. It was really <coughs> clear, at least to me, by back then. And when we made the change and when with a default postscripts conf file. So you had, you had byte uh, data and yeah. it started not working anymore. Yeah, that, that happened to me. I had to read, read the release notes. Yeah. Yeah, well, that was easy to fix. It is. You might have mentioned PG upgrades uh, check mode, or ch check or test or dry run, whatever. PG upgrade has a yes. Yeah, also, there's a way you can test the PG upgrade if it will work or not. Well, it actually runs some tests before actually it performing, you run, you but you can just run. Uh, yeah, so it, it like <laughs> it runs all the tests, and when it gets to the point where it's r actually doing the upgrade, it ends and says okay or not okay. No more questions? What time is it? Do I have time? Nothing. Uh, three, minutes. three minutes. Okay. I can say that this was a good talk.